Today we want to talk about some of the uh, techniques that you do with instrumentation that aren't in the textbook, kind of what we call the down and dirty of dental hygiene. So I want to talk to you about utilizing instruments in ways that you don't read about in, uh, in your uh, Neil text. One of the things that I really like to do, especially with a patient like this that has a little bit of recession, I don't know if you can see in my mirror there, Jamie, where there's just a little bit of recession. I say Jamie, she's all the way back there. And there's just a little bit of recession. Sometimes it's hard to gain access to this area with a sickle. Trying to clean this area with a sickle is like trying to clean a chalkboard with a pencil eraser. So what I would recommend is that you get your Gracie 1314. That way, the contra angle allows you to be out of your own line of vision. If you have a straight shaked instrument, you have to be so up on your fulcrum that you're right where you need to see. This way, the contra angle allows you to fulcrum a little farther away and then you can take the toe to remove larger pieces of deposit. It just has a larger blade on it. It's got a larger blade and a contra angle. The contra angle also allows you to go a little bit further down the surface of the tooth than the shorter shaped sickle. But see how I keep the toe down? And because it is a rounded toe with it being a, a gracie, it's nice because you can just go in there and just scoop and get that area nicely and root plane. Sometimes, even though this isn't the cutting edge, I'll, I'll turn it the opposite way just to use it like a hoe to remove some of the instrument going, some of the deposit going the opposite way. Okay, so that's one recommendation. Another thing that I'm going to talk about. Ah, you don't have an anterior gracie. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this isn't necessarily something that's different from a nail, but once you, <clears throat> once you sit at the 11 o'clock position for the surfaces away and do your correct instrumentation with your gracie, then I recommend that you flip the gracie around and use an alternate fulcrum with your thumb. Retract the lip with your forefinger, take your thumb, and then gently take the gracie and go across the entire face of the instrument in this direction. But you need a lot of control to do this because you don't want to harm the patient. This allows you to clean off deposit that's just slightly underneath the deposit, underneath the tissue that's hiding. That happens a lot. Students will get the mesial distal, but that straight facial, especially here and up here, gets missed. So same thing up here, you could take this, oh, excuse me, and go about that far and then come this direction to clean off that deposit. Okay. Another thing that I really like to do that uh, we don't see a lot is use, a post, uh, use the sickle or the Montana Jack on the posterior teeth. Now one of the reasons I like to do this is that this is, a, this is a, a long blade and it's got a lot of power behind it. If you get in there and position yourself directly behind a molar tooth, then all you have to do is kind of sweep it around to pop off large pieces of deposit. Okay. So sometimes as we come here with our Gracie's and try to work our way around, we can't always sneak really deep like you can with a thin bladed instrument. So I'm not saying you should use the, the sickle everywhere. And that's the Montana Jack, which is a little bit more predisposed to reaching back there. Um, but, uh, but see how that can just slide right down almost like a pro, but it's got a blade on it so you can kind of wrap it around. So I would sit, I would do it both directions. I would come this way and this way, okay? Now on the maxillary teeth, for kind of the same concept, I make sure that I can see, and it, you have, um, what is that vision when you're looking at me? Indirect. <laughs> indirect. <laughs> make sure you have indirect vision, use an extra oral fulcrum here, and then the same thing, take your sickle and, and, and kind of um, uh, instrument from uh, one side to the other and then turn it around and instrument the other direction. Always keep it in mind to keep that toe down. So if you're sitting at like the nine o'clock position, tip your head just a tad, if you put that mirror in there like this and you have indirect vision, then you have an extra oral fulcrum here and then you can, like I said, keep the toe down and position yourself to do a sweep from the lingual to the buckle then move your instrument the other way and do your sweep this way too. You almost never miss those uh, teeth if you practice that kind of instrumentation. Another thing that I recommend is that you never forget to take your sickle and instrument just right up under the contact on your premolars. 
go ahead and go around to clean the whole mouth, but then when you're done, take the instrument and just position it right up under the contact and pop off any residual deposit that remains right before the contact. The reason that's so important is that it's a posterior tooth and we're often using a large bladed instrument to clean that area and the blade can only go so far up into the contact unless you're using Shane's really nice instrument like that. <laughs> and that, that allows you with the, to the contra angle and the blade. But if you take the sickle and get up right up under there, then you're never going to miss that deposit. And that's where most examiners will go to, to snag you on those spots right there. One of the things that I would like to really impress upon students is that if you're going to um, explore uh, super gingerly on the back molars where uh, Stenson's duct here kind of deposits the saliva right here in this area, if you take your instrument and kind of um, move it backward, instead of the regular exploratory technique where we start subgingival and come coronal, I'm going to have you start coronally and just kind of drag it to the CEJ. You can feel a lot more of that latent kind of sheet deposit present on the uh, super gingival uh, portion of the tooth. Now, like I said, a lot of times students will get the deposit that's straight distal and straight buccal, but they miss this line angle deposit right here. And there's often always line angle deposit present because that is where Stenson's duct is located. So I recommend that you have a good fulcrum right on the teeth and take your instrument backward and do a kind of a wrapping stroke starting on the distal and a coronally and moving around like this okay yeah. so you'd be you'd have a good fulcrum and you'll start here distally and then wrap it around now sometimes the SH67 is not going to be the ideal instrument for this it just kind of depends on how easy the deposit comes off the SIU 1718 which I love, it has a really big blade on it. This is a very nice instrument to get off extra, a super gingival deposit. See what I mean? So that's a nice instrument to use, and you can use an extra fulcrum back here to do the same thing. Okay? So I wanted to make sure, don't overlook those line angle deposits. A lot of times people leave that deposit there. The student clinician, that when you're instrumenting on the lingual of this quadrant, that you're making sure that your working stroke is still going toward the, to toward the tooth. It's easy enough on the, on the straight linguals to be coming this way where your stroke's coming more anterior to the, to the mouth. And then when you start to make that turn to the mesial, you have to make sure to change, shift your fulcrum, shift your direction, and, and make sure your stroke's still going toward the tooth. But now the tooth is going toward the distal part of the mouth. So that's a different kind of stroke than keeping your fulcrum more anterior and still pulling outside the, the direction outside of the mouth. See the difference between that and making sure that the stroke's still going toward the tooth. You'll be surprised in how much more effective you'll be in your instrumentation if you make sure that your stroke is indeed going in the direction that the tooth is facing. So if you're on the distal portion of the tooth, you make sure to be, pu be pulling this way toward the tooth. When you're on the straight lingual, you're pushing against the tooth this way, and then on the mesial, you have to push this way. One thing initially I'd like to point out is you're always taught to only sit on this side of the patient, but sometimes you gain better access and better vision if you swing to the wrong side of the chair. So I'm going to give you my back here for a second, and what I'm doing is looking at the lingual aspect of the lower mandibular right quadrant here. A lot of times when we sit here, utilizing proper posture and all that to look at this lingual aspect, but it's easier if you'll swing around to the wrong side of the chair. And there you have direct vision straight at the lingual aspect. Just like this. So sitting on the wrong side is oftentimes to your advantage. Don't be afraid to do that. Now, you can come in closer now. Okay. What we're going to do now is show a technique for scaling the distal aspect of tooth number two or any second molar in the mouth by utilizing a straight sickle scaler, in this case an H67. We're going to use this instrument by using the point straight down, which certainly sounds contradictory to what you've been taught, but we're just taking it down to the, to the sulcus and then we're utilizing a horizontal stroke coming towards the cheek to sweep for any residual calculus that's remaining on the back side of, of this molar. You can also do a, excuse me, a vertical stroke straight up and you can utilize an oblique stroke going towards the tongue using a well-controlled stroke, of course. 
using these three overlapping strokes, you're going to have a greater advantage of removing any tartar calculus buildup from the distal aspect of the second molars on the maxillary as well as the mandibular. Once again, point is straight down. You just use it in an exploratory stroke going down to find the depth of the sulcus, back up a little bit, and then you're just going to pull towards you as I'm sitting now, or you can pull straight up. This is using what's typically considered an anterior instrument in the posterior. So, an area that is often missed by students is the distal buccal and mesial buccal line angle of the first and second maxillary molars. So, pull down just a touch here. Something that I do is I put the instrument in a little before the line angle and then follow the papilla around onto the line angle. And then to get the distal buckle, I start here and do a horizontal stroke to come across. Because oftentimes they'll have a line of supra gingival calculus in those two areas. Another area I find is often missed is the mesial and distal of mandibular premolars. So an easy way to get that area is with a sickle and come on this side, on the right side, come up to the 12 o'clock position and use an oblique stroke across there. And you can do the same on the distal. But you fulcrum almost directly on top of the area that you're working in. Now to get the left side, I come down to as close to the 6 o'clock as I can get and do the same stroke. Fulcrum very close and come across with an oblique stroke on the distal, same, same direction.